Hi, I'm Steve, and this is American Midwest English. We're continuing talking about punctuation, and today we're going to talk about commas. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe buttons below. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comments box below. And thanks for visiting my channel. Now, this is a comma. It's separating each of these words, each of these words. The first rule for using commas is you use it before a coordinating conjunction when it joins two complete thoughts. These words are coordinating conjunctions. And, but, yet, so, or, for, and nor. And here's an example of how you could use them. I'm here and I'm talking about commas. These are two separate thoughts. I'm here, that's one thought. I'm talking about commas. That's the second complete thought. So they're joined with the comma that's separating them and the word and. Another example, Anna has a dog and she loves her a lot. Anna has a dog is one complete thought. Then it has a comma, the coordinating conjunction and, she loves her a lot. This is another complete thought. Another way to use commas is after an introductory phrase. An introductory phrase gives you some information before the main part of the sentence. So, in some cases, native speakers use commas wrongly. This is the introductory phrase in some cases. The main part of the sentence is native speakers use commas wrongly. Now the difference is, in some cases, is not a sentence on its own. But native speakers use commas wrongly is a sentence on its own. So that's the difference between the introductory phrase and the main part of the sentence. Another example, when it is raining, I always use an umbrella. When it is raining is the introductory part of this sentence. It is not a sentence on its own. I always use an umbrella is the main part of the sentence, and that can be a sentence on its own. So you use a comma to separate the introductory phrase from the main part of the sentence. Another way you use commas, when there is a series of three or more items, use a comma to separate them. Here are three examples. I looked for my keys in the car, my coat, and my desk. This is a series of phrases. I bought a computer, a mouse, and a keyboard. This is a series of words. Lucy is a good dog because she is friendly, she behaves well, and she likes people. This is a series of clauses. Something I want to mention. A clause may or may not be a complete sentence. A phrase is not a complete sentence. A phrase will not be a complete sentence, but a clause might be or it might not be. Something else I want to mention about using commas with a series of things. The last thing 
in the series is not going to have a comma before it. If it's an inclusive series, for example, I went to Italy, France, and Pakistan, it's going to have and in front of it. If it's not an inclusive series, for example, I did not go to Argentina, Japan, or Kenya, it will have either or, but, or nor. It's going to have a conjunction in either case. So this is for a sentence that has a non-inclusive series of things. This is an inclusive theory, series of things. Another way that you'll use a comma is to separate a non-restrictive clause from the rest of the sentence. The first example is a non-restrictive clause. Dave, who called earlier, is coming with us. A non-restrictive clause is a clause that if you take it out of the sentence, the sentence will still make sense and it does not give you important information for understanding the sentence. So even if you took this out, who called earlier, the sentence, Dave is coming with us, still makes sense. The second example is a restrictive clause. A restrictive clause is a clause that gives you information that you need to understand the sentence. And in some cases, the sentence won't make any sense if you take it out. The guy who is by the door is the person to ask this. If you take out this clause, who is by the door, the sentence doesn't make sense. And it's important information so that you know which guy you're talking about. And something else to make note of is a restrictive or a non-restrictive clause might or might not have pronouns like who, whose, whom, things like that. They may or they may not have them. Another way to use commas is you use a comma to separate an appositive from the sentence. An appositive is a noun or noun phrase used to rename a nearby noun. In these two examples, there's a difference between a positive and non -a positive. In the first sentence, Shakespeare, the English writer, is famous. This is an appositive sentence because the English writer is renaming Shakespeare. In the second sentence, the writer Shakespeare is famous. This is non-appositive because Shakespeare is not being renamed in this sentence. You also use commas when directly addressing a person. Steve, I think you're correct. I think, Steve, you're correct. I think you're correct, Steve. So there's a comma there after the name. There's a comma before the name and after the name. And then there's a comma before the name in this third example. You also use a comma to separate direct quotations from the rest of the sentence. So in the first example, Anna said, my dog Lucy is the best. The quotation is, my dog Lucy is the best, and the comma comes before it. In the second sentence, Jess understands a lot of English, he said. In this case, the quotation comes first, and you put the comma after the quotation and before he said. In the third example, Runa, he said, speaks a lot of languages. In this case, the quotation is broken in half. 
So you have a, a comma after the first part of the quotation, and then you have a comma before the second part of the quotation. The final way we use commas is for dates, titles, addresses, and numbers. For a date, December 13th, 2020 is today's date. The comma goes between the day and the year. For titles, Bob Smith, PhD, is our guest. PhD is a title, philosophy degree. And the comma goes after Bob Smith and before the title. I live near Chicago, Illinois. The comma goes after the name of the city or town. The U.S. has 360 million people. For this type of number, the comma is given in groups of three numbers. So that's 360, 360,000, so you're using a comma, 360 million. If we change that number to 36 million, then the comma goes here. And then there's a comma there. So that's 36 million. If you don't quite understand that with numbers, with this type of number, don't worry about it. We'll cover numbers in a different video later on. And this is how we use commas. Like always, if you like the video, hit the like button below and please subscribe. And if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them in the comments section below. Thank you again for watching. In the next eight sentences, Commas are needed in some of the sentences, but not all of them. The answers will be in the More Information box below.